Hey everybody, welcome to 31 Days of Wisdom, Walking Through Proverbs. Today we are going to dive into chapter number 19. So if you haven't already read chapter 19, go ahead and pause this video, go ahead and read it, and we'll uh, unpack it when you come back. Hey, welcome back. Chapter 19, let's go ahead and dive in, okay? Let's... Um, Let's go to verse number three. Today, I'm going to be reading from the Passion Translation, okay? Let's go to verse number three. It says, there are some people who, Lord, I'm, I'm going to repeat this one again. It, it might, it might, you might go, ouch, when you hear this one. There are some people who ruin their own lives and then blame it all on God. Who, 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 go, go ahead and say, ouch, ouch. Right. There are some people who ignore the voice of God and then blame him because of the consequences. Wisdom asks, OK, God. What what uh, what role did I play in my decisions? What role did I play in me ending up? where I am. Wisdom does inventory on your own life. Wisdom takes accountability for actions and habits. Wisdom looks in the mirror and says, I have to change. See, this is the beginning of wisdom. Is the fear of God, right? And then looking in the mirror and say, if something going, if I want something to change in my life, I'm going to have to make that change. I'm going to have to Michael Jackson this thing. I'm going to have to man in the mirror. <laughs> I'm going to have to make that change and not blame other people. Play the blame game. They didn't do, they didn't do, they didn't do. Is to look in the mirror and say, okay, I made some wrong decisions in my life. But that does not, that does not define who I am. I have the choice by the grace of God to be able to make better choices and wiser choices in my life going forward. This was just a little chapter in my book of life. Amen. That was great. So let me stop. All right. <laughs> let's, let's go to verse number nine. Number nine. It says, oh my gosh, my gosh. I'm sorry, eight, eight. I mean, verse number eight, okay? Eight says, do yourself a favor and love wisdom. Learn all you can. Then watch your life flourish and prosper. Listen, a, a wise person is a forever learner. A wise person never goes into a situation or never goes into a conversation thinking they know every single thing about everything. I learn stuff from babies sometimes, just watching how free they are and how they move and how they trust in parents and things like that. It gives me it gives me insight into the heart of God and faith. See, this is the thing we have to understand. You have never fully arrived. You can always extract wisdom from anywhere you are, from any person you're around. Wisdom always looks to grow wiser. Wisdom always looks, a, a, a wise person is always hungry for wisdom and knowledge. Because they know that is how they grow. A wise person is always hungry for wisdom and knowledge because they know that's how they can grow. All right, let's look at verse number 11. A wise person demonstrates patience. Ooh, ooh, that's the P word, patience. For mercy, ooh, means holding your tongue when you are insulted 
be quick to forgive and guess what? Forget it. For you are virtuous when you overlook offense. I'm going to read that again. A wise person demonstrates patience for mercy. Means holding your tongue when you are insulted. Be quick to forgive and forget it. For you are virtuous when you overlook offense. The Bible says that people will know that we are disciples of Christ because of how we love. Here, it says love not, over, not only overlooks offense, it forgets it. <whistles> you know how people say, man, I, I, I forgive, but you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I can forget. Can I ask you this question right here? What if Jesus had that attitude? What, what, what if Jesus said, hey, Eric, you know what? You you, you disobeyed me before. Um, don't know if I can forgive you this time. Um, you know, uh, you disobeyed me over and over and over and over and over. And I don't deserve this. I'm perfect. You shouldn't be treating me this way. People laugh when I ask him that question because it sounds weird, right? <laughs> But that's how we sound sometimes. And I know people have done egregious things. People have, have acted on heinous, heinous actions. But the forgiveness and the forgetting about it is not about them. It's not about them getting away with anything. It's not about them getting by with anything. It's about you becoming free in Christ. It's about you not holding any anger or bitterness toward a person that will stop you from becoming who God has called you to be, to stop you from walking into what and who God has called you to be. See, those things are, we have to release those things so that God can come into us because those things can lead to a hardened heart. And God cannot work with a hardened heart. He cannot work with bitterness. He cannot work with anger. And you say, yeah, Pazzy, I know. You don't know what they've done to me. You don't know what they did. You know what? I don't. But God does. And he's saying, you have to let that offense go. And it's not saying that they were right. It's not saying that you deserved it. It's not saying that they're going to get away with it. Because guess what? They're going to have to face that one day. They're going to have. To reckon with that one day. But the thing you don't want it to do is to allow what somebody did or not do to you control you for the rest of your life. So that is something that we really have to work on. Because I understand, I understand that people have done some harsh things to you. And God is saying that doesn't define you and not to let that pollute your heart or pollute your soul or pollute your mind because he has a greater purpose for you on this life and in this life while you're here, not just when you get to heaven, while you're here on this earth. Amen. Let's look at verse number 20. It says, here we go again. Listen well to wise counsel and be willing to learn from correction so that by the end of your life, you'll be known for your wisdom. This is over and over again. Counsel, 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 wisdom and counsel, wisdom and counsel, wisdom and counsel. This is why we have to have a great community around us so that we can have good information. Because we can get in our feelings sometimes. Let's be honest. We can get in our feelings sometimes. We can get overly excited. Or we can be down about something. We can hop on something because there's nothing else. There's no other choice. But wisdom says, hey, man, go to at least two. Go to at least two people, if not three, and say, hey, what do y'all think about this? Now, I'm talking about wise people. I'm not talking about, you know, people who you see are not living wise lives. Like, let's let's use discernment with with who we go to with our issues right and with our questions because you know we have to we have to take inventory from where the information is coming from 
Okay, let's just not take information from anybody. You know what I mean? You use discernment when 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 uh, trying to get counsel from people. But counsel, wisdom looks for counsel. Wisdom looks for other perspectives. So again, we can take in the information, pray on it, and ask the Lord to give us the discernment to make the right decision. We need counsel in our lives. We cannot do it alone, okay? You cannot do it alone, okay? Find some people who you can confide in to gain wisdom on uh, situations in your life, okay? We're going to look at one more verse and we're going to go to 23. It says, when you live a life of abandoned love, surrendered before the awe of God, here's what you'll experience. Abundant life, continual protection, and complete satisfaction. This is saying, man, when you love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, he has to do what he says. Now, this is not saying that we won't have trials. We won't have tribulations. You know, we won't have situations where we think we're down. We won't have ups and downs. It is saying when you trust in him and you have trust in the one who has your life and you love him with all of your life, he can turn those situations and your perspective into looking better than you would have without him. See, this is thing is about perspective. Some people look at some people look at trials and tribulations as opportunities. Some people look at obstacles as opportunities. Some people look at obstacles as stopping signs. But this is saying, look, when we love God, we know that He has our best interest at heart, and whatever we're going through, we can always find protection, abundant life, and satisfaction. Because we love the one who loves us. All right, let's go on prayer. So, Father, we thank you again for this day. Lord, we ask you to help us by your Holy Spirit to forgive and to forget. To not hold grudges. To not have a bitter heart towards people who've done us wrong. Father, give us the strength to get through situations. Father, wipe our minds clear of wrongdoing to us. Give us a new perspective on mercy and grace so that we will not stop ourselves from becoming who you have called us to be on this earth so that we can experience an abundant life in you. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank you guys again uh, for joining us in this 31 Days of Wisdom. We'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.